Mike Davis allows us to successfully snap our three-event losing streak in regards to lock of the night plays that we had for the UFC as he comes through with relative ease and showcasing what a lock of the night play should actually look like. Obviously, it's a little bit chalky at minus 290. He closed closer to minus 450. That's why it's nice to drop the lock of the night play nice and early in fight week so we can get the best number possible. And he was able to go out there and absolutely dominate Natan Levy on the mat and then eventually secure that second round uh, choke uh, victory. I was hoping we would make it to the third round as I had a little bit of a flyer at uh, his round three sub prop at plus 2,800 doesn't end up coming through for us, but he still goes out there and gets the win, which is the most important part of that lock of the night prediction. Now that increases our record, and we went 4-0 on the weekend, including the UFC and all the regional shows that I covered. So that brings our total now to 16-10 and 10 on the year for a minus one, or sorry, minus 11.74 units, which pretty much is half of the deficit that we had uh, after last week. So good progress there uh, and it's now down to minus nine percent roi so the green or sorry the black and then the green is just around the corner here just got to keep it slow and steady continue to trust the reads and we'll get back into the win column here and get some profit back into our pockets all right obviously i got another three lock of the night candidates here for you guys for ufc vegas 89 something i quickly just want to remind you guys is the fact that i yes i list three candidates only one of them ends up being the actual lock of the night play. And that doesn't necessarily mean that I actually have a play on those other two spots. So just because I include them in the video does not mean that I'm saying, okay, go out and bet these guys. They are just the three spots that I feel are either most popular in, in the week amongst the public. Uh, guys that should be in the conversation of a lock of the night candidate. Um, yeah, just one of those two things, uh, or then ultimately the actual lock of the night uh, that I end up going with. So just keep that in mind whenever you guys watch these videos for the lock of the night and the dog of the night as well. So um, if you want to find out which one is actually my lock of the night play, I dropped that on the Patreon page. So make sure you guys check that out, the lock of the night Patreon page. Link for that is in the description below. And I've already dropped it this week. Has taken a little bit of action, but we'll see where that line ends up settling come fight night. Regardless, I'm feeling pretty damn good about it. All right. Right, let's get right into it. We got three lock of the night candidates here for you guys for UFC Vegas 89. The first of which is going to be Mr. Mick Parkin, who comes in at minus 140 going up against uh, Mohamed Usman. Now, this is a heavyweight matchup between two guys that I think are on different levels in terms of pure skill set. Now, Usman is a little bit more recognizable considering the fact that he is the brother of Kamaru, but I don't think he is of the level of his brother. And he is just getting by on some of these matchups due to small details that Mick Parkin is not going to be able to get him uh, the, the edge in. You know, Parkin will have the pressure advantage. He has the striking advantage in terms of optimization speaking he'll continuously be moving forward putting volume and pressure on Usman and Usman might be able to land some good shots down the pipe but I don't think it's going to cause anything that will cause uh, Parkin to um, slow down or second guess his style of just continuously moving forward and putting output out there but also the the wrestling uh, advantage here and people might say that Usman might have the technical wrestling advantage here but Parkin does such a great job in terms of scrambling uh, chaining wrestling uh, attempts together uh, the, the guy's so good in terms of never settling for a bad position and yes there have been times where he's been reversed and put on his back but you see him on his back for a very short period of time because he works immediately to either get a reversal get to the cage or eventually get back to his feet and then get back to that rinse repeat style that he has I think he should more than cruise in this matchup against Usman it might be competitive early but as we get into deeper waters I expect Parkins high activity style to cause Usman a ton of problems here and that could potentially even open up a round three finish for Parkin but I'm going to take him to win on the scorecards but regardless even at minus 140 I think is a damn good lock of the night candidate here the second lock of the night candidate is going to be Trey Ogden who comes in at minus 155 going up against recent tough winner Kurt Hollibaugh now Ogden is coming off one of the best performances we've seen from him where he went out there and almost beat Nicholas Mota unfortunately a premature, premature stoppage from the referee caused that fight to go to a no contest and Ogden was robbed of a victory but Ogden still showing tremendous improvements since making his UFC debut and is a guy that is getting better 
He is a BJJ black belt, but his game planning and execution is really coming to fruition. His striking is a lot of mobility, a lot of lateral movement, and then crash in the pocket with a sharp jab down the pipe, one twos down the pipe. Um, and you can see how much damage he's able to uh, uh, impact on his opponents, considering how much we saw Mota kind of just, uh, you know, just dripping blood from his nose and mouth from those types of shots that Ogden was landing. And then eventually sneaking in uh, takedowns behind it and utilizing his BJJ black belt to control his opponents and eventually open up submission opportunities. Holoba is a BJJ black belt as well. Holoba has way more legit experience than Ogden, but a lot of his success comes from breaking opponents and forcing them to fight in the pocket exchange where I don't think Ogden will uh, um, uh, agree to fight in that range with him. I think we'll see Ogden continue to stay lateral, hit him with a jab down the pipe, and then eventually start going for takedowns here. And I think with his BJJ black belt in tow, he should be able to take uh, control of Holaba on the mat and stay out of any type of bad uh, submission opportunities that Holaba might be throwing up off of his back or even trying to catch the neck of Ogden here. So I do like Ogden to put together a better body of work uh, over Kurt Holaba and then eventually win this fight on the scorecards. The third and final lock of the night candidate I have for you guys is going to be Rose Nama Yunus, who has taken a tremendous amount of action over the last couple of days, but she now finds herself at minus 235 against Amanda Hibas. Now, Hibas' path to victory more often than not is looking to take her opponents to the ground and grind them up from that top position. She could potentially have success in that round, but I think she's going to find it hard to do so as Rose is continuously setting traps in the striking realm, eventually opening up knockout opportunities for herself. I think we'll see Rose dictate the range well here, utilize her kicks up the middle, and I think she'll make Kibas pay a lot, especially with Kibas's poor striking defense. Like, she moves a lot, she throws a lot of feints, and, you know, makes it look like she has high activity, but she clearly leaves a lot of openings for a lot of opponents to hit her down the pipe, which is why you see her banged up more often than not even when she ends up getting her hand raised in these fights so i think that nama Yunus should have a lot of success in the striking realm and i think it even opens up a knockout opportunity for her within the first three rounds of this main event fight so he uh nama Yunus will be the third and final lock of the night candidate which of these three did i end up going with check out the lock of the night patreon page link for that in the description below let's make it two straight weeks in a row and get some momentum rolling Otherwise, I will see you guys tomorrow for the top three dog of the night candidates and hopefully a Bellator full card breakdown as well. So keep your eyes peeled for that. See you guys then.